Hey guys, me and Swamia from Unreal Tech here at Division of Blended Tech, and welcome to part 10 in the Dynamic Linked Inventory and Crafting series. It is the second bonus video. I'm going to start showing you how you can start to build with slots instead of um, buttons. So we're going to create a quick view mini bar for the screen that shows recently picked up items at the bottom and we're going to uh, also work with starting with a HUD and how to place whole widgets within another widget. So what we want to do is right click, sorry I should say that, with that said open your project, remember we're working in 4.8, remember our motto create your way in, we'll get to it. So yeah, we want to right click on our, uh, actually we'll go to our GUI folder, we'll make a new folder called main GUI. Although I guess this does have to do with inventory, however, we will need a main GUI. So we want a user interface widget, which we will call widget underscore um, main HUD. Save that so it doesn't uh, lose the folder. We'll set that to green. Crafting we're not worrying about right now. We can set that to a uh, new color, red. Well, I picked pure red right off the ball, perfect. So with our widget main HUD, created we'll save to make sure that doesn't get erased and then we'll go into our inventory and we need to create a couple widgets so we want to go user interface widget blueprint we want to go widget underscore and we're going to call this quick bar and we want to create a user interface widget widget underscore uh, quick slot so the quick slot will go in the quick bar which will go in the main GUI I'm going to show you how to combine all these so we'll open up the quick bar first and we'll set that up so first uh, delete the canvas panel I'm going to show you a little trick if you go to fill screen and hit custom and I I close the animation timeline by the way when we from when we were doing animations if I didn't mention that so the width uh, will go about 256 with a height of about 40 or so we want our icons to be 32 by 32 so that'll give it a little bit of padding actually let's just start with 32 to keep things simple because padding can be a pain in the butt so what we want to do here is we need to add start with our size box and so this just kind of lets us preview it doesn't actually set the size so that's why we need to take our size box and go to the width and height and set those values 256 by 32 that way it'll look exactly as we're previewing it so after our size box as you all know I like to start with uh, we want to add a border so that you can always add an image later to spruce it up and we're gonna set it to my favorite color 282828 FF and then we want to add a grid panel and a grid panel um, does exactly what you think it basically uh, gives you a grid to work with in columns and rows and we don't want any padding since we decided that um, our height would be a perfect 32 so we can have 32 by 32 uh, uh, slots so with that set I believe we are done now the grid panel it needs to be a variable so just check off is variable and then we can compile and save and in the graph we want to go to event construct and we want to cast to first person character because we need to create a reference variable and we want to get player character as the what we what we're casting into the first person character and just for kicks we'll promote that to a variable first person car and compile and save that and so this way we're able to set grid panel for um as a as a uh, reference variable in first per in the first person character um you'll see what I mean in a second so if we open up our first person character if we go to our add inventory um, function 
that's when we add items into the inventory and destroy them. I'm going to take the destroy item and move it way, way over. And I'm going to break that link. So this is going to be how we add our slots into our into our a our little uh, panel that holds slots. So um, first, however, we need to set that reference variable. So what we need to do is create a new variable which we'll call inv quick bar and set its type to widget underscore quick bar and then uh, hold down alt and drag it in so we can set it or sorry no I'm doing this wrong we need to do that in the quick bar we need to drag off a first person character and we need to type uh, set in quick bar and we want to set it to itself so off the reference here we want a reference to self so get a reference to self so we're just creating a reference variable so that we can we can uh, access this from the first person character code. It'll give you an error if you don't compile the first person character first and then it'll be all good. So in the first person character, now we can we can get inv quick bar and we can get grid panel 4. And so the same way that we um we add we added buttons before to our list, we want to add we want to add slots to our grid so it works exactly the same way so we drag off and we create widget and we create um, a quick slot and then the return value we add child now remember it doesn't show up if you don't turn off context sensitive and we're working with a um, we're working with a grid, so add child to grid. And the target grid is grid panel four. Now that's all we can do there for now. What we need to do now is go back into our inventory and open up the quick slot. We'll do the same trick, fill screen custom. We'll go 32 by 32. I don't have any images handy, but we will fill it with a border first we're going to start with the size box oh sorry delete the canvas panel first we're going to start with size box and then width and height are going to be 32 by 32 so it fits in our bar nicely and then we're going to add oops a border to give it some color since i don't have an image handy and we'll make it quite dark and now we're going to do a little trick here so now we're going to add a canvas panel and you'll see it's got some padding. So the padding up here in slot, we want to change to zero so it fills up the whole thing. And then we want to add a text to the canvas panel. And it's very large, yes. Hit size to content and change the size to around 12 or 14. And then I'm going to type in zero. This will be our item count if we ever want to venture there. I'm going to set the anchor to the top right and I'm going to move it over. Never know, you might have double digits, so I might leave room for that. And up. So, something like that. So, something like that will work. So, we'll compile and save that. Perfect. So, now we can go back into our first person character. Well, we can test this out actually. If we compile and save. Um, so what we'll do is in the main GUI we made that remember widget main HUD so this can be the HUD that shows over our entire view so if we go into the graph in 4.8 remember we did the preview background in one of the episodes so let's select our high-res screenshot so that we can kind of see how it'll look and so this is the trick you can add any if you go down to the bottom of your palette you have user created you can add anything that you created to another widget exactly as they were designed and so we want our quick bar in our canvas panel we'll put it somewhere down here in the corner I like it and um, and then we'll be adding quick slots to it like so basically but we won't be doing it here we that's just we're just setting it up so compile and save that 
but we need some way to display that. So since it's a HUD and it will be continuously displayed, of course you could toggle it if you wanted, we want to open our HUD, our first person HUD. And so on event begin play, when the game starts, we want to create a widget. And the widget we want to create is our widget main HUD. Our owning player is get player controller. And the return value, drag off and add to viewport. So now we can test it. Hit play. As you can see, we have our little bar on the bottom. We pick up an item. It adds a little slot. However, you can see if I continue to pick up items, I forgot to re-add the destroy. It doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It just continues to overlap them. So that's where you need to get creative with columns, and this is why slots are a lot harder. So how columns work is you can take the return value of add child to grid, and that's that's a memory reference. That is that. That is that slot. And so you can drag off the return value, and there's a node called set column. There's also set column span. And we need context sensitive off in this case, but we are working with a grid slot, not a uniform grid slot. So we want to set column. And so that works. And so you'll see if I say type in four, compile, save, play. When I pick one up, you'll see that it doesn't get changed anywhere. So how can we make it so that it fits into columns like it should? Well, what we need to do is create a new variable called quick bar column and we want to set it to that. Now quick bar column will start at zero and then after we set the column we want to increment it so if you're using 4.8 we can increment int otherwise just add one to itself and set it so we'll increment it so plus plus one and so quickly I can show you what this does compile play now when I add one it starts at the beginning and it continues down the row and then it will continue to go on we can make that a little bit cleaner if we go to the quick bar and select either the grid panel or the border I'm gonna select the grid panel and um, we can vertically align everything compile play and it'll center it just like that so um what we need to do next so that's great and all but we only get a few items and that's it and they're kind of stuck there so what we need to do is after we reach uh how many did we see how many can we fit in there? Do we figure eight or six? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fit eight. I should have put a little bit of padding on them, but that's okay. So um, what we want to do is take this and um, we, we want to... Well, actually, there's an easier way to do this. What we can do is delete that, and when we set column, we can go select int instead of doing a bunch of math. And A will be 0, and B will be a quick bar column. And then we'll go if quick bar column is equal to, double equal to compare equal integer to 8 then b pick a so then it'll set it back to 0 and then we simply take the return value and increment it so now compile and save and play I guess you won't see any changes but now it should be only adding 8 but it is not. What is the problem here? 
Okay, it's just the incrementer. So the incrementer needs to, by reference, go directly to a quick bar column. We can't come off of the select int. That makes sense. So now when we play, it gives us eight, but no more. And you can't see that, but it will help if what we do is go to our quick slot and we take, say, the, uh, we'll just quickly go through this. We'll just, uh, actually, let's, well, let's do it a visual way. We'll take border and we'll make a binding. We remember we made lots of bindings by now and we will actually, sorry, we'll bind the brush of the border, create binding. And remember it takes in a slate brush structure, which we want to make. And so what we can do is we can do our uh, usual, we can create a variable called um, S item data or whatever we called it, I can't remember now. Structure item, yep, data. And we can take that and get it and break it. And then we can take thumbnail to image and compile and save and play. Now, when you uh, select one, you would figure that it would give you the thumbnail. But that's because this uh, doesn't actually have any data to grab. So actually, an easier way to do that would be to just simply delete that. And let's go back to the designer and remove that binding, remove binding. We can just do it in the first person character because we have all that data right here. So we can... We can take, oh, how did I do this again? What we'll do is actually go back to the slot graph, make a variable called, um, or called, um, slot brush, which will be a slate brush. Compile and save that. Go to the designer, select the border and bind it to properties slot brush and compile and then we'll go to first person character and then we can take the return value of add child to grid we can get slot brush sorry set slot brush grid slot oh sorry off the return value of the widget uh, set brush slot brush and we'll need to do that before we add it to the grid. So we'll move everything over, break the execution chain, throw that in there. Now it takes in a slate brush structure. So we'll come off and we'll make one. And just like before, image to thumbnail. So compile and save. And if I'm not mistaken, now we should get our thumbnails. There you go. You can just barely see it, but if you had better thumbnails, obviously it would um, it would show up nicely. So, like that. Now we have the same thumbnail for everything, so that's not going to give us a lot of detail. So what we should do is take this item number here, and we will uh, we'll go to the graph. We'll make another variable. We'll call it count. It'll be an uh, we'll make it a string. I think that will work. We will bind the text. No, it needs to be a name. So make that a name. And bind the text. Compile. Sorry, not. Yeah, bind. Okay, so we need to create a binding. So we'll create a binding and the return value will be name, it should be text is what I'm going for. When it's text, then you can set it to property count. So compile and save that. And then we can go back here and we can do the same thing. We can set count. And that's text. 
Now why did the target not connect there? Alright, and the count, well we don't have how many um, we have here, so we would need to take the inventory array, do a get, or do a, sorry, for each loop, We would need to break item data. And then we could do something like, I'm just going to go as an example quickly. If item class is equal to uh, what it would what do we have metal or something? Yeah, BP metal branch loop body Condition Then we we'll want a local variable. We'll call it count Integer we will set count To itself plus one so for every time it finds one that's metal um, it'll it'll in increment the count and of course you can use the techniques we used in the inventory and crafting uh, setups to do this for every item but I'm just doing this as an example and so then we take the final return value, count, we get it, and we convert integer to text. Now we need to do a sequence, so that it's not doing that funny. We need to do that first, and then we create the widget. So now, if I'm not mistaken, we should get how many we have in our inventory. So one, two, three, four five six seven eight nine you see how it overlaps there i guess that's because i actually needed seven so you see how it would continue to go on and so what you need to do is um uh, we're gonna keep going here we need to get the number of columns basically um basically we need to say if uh our quick bar column count if it's equal to eight so if it's full then we create a branch that's our condition then we drag off of grid panel 4 and we do get child and we could also have just done get child count I guess um, we want to remove child at and that's true and the index is going to be uh, yeah zero I think so compile save play so we pick one two three four five six seven eight nine I guess I was doing that for metal let me restart that see if that works no Remove child at index. I guess it would have to be come off here. Get child at. Get index. 
target is grid panel 4 content is get child at index 0 return value let's see if that works no index 1 Sort of working. It needs more math, I believe. Um, but you can see how you can use this and um, create systems. I'm going off the top of my head here, and I will come up with something much better when we go into an actual slot based inventory. But you can see how you can use slots and children and um, setting columns and rows um, to create these kinds of setups. So yeah that's that's really it sorry I just remembered how to uh, do that because essentially we never set up any rules for how how many widgets can fit in here which comes with setting it up properly so uh, what I did was drug off of the grid panel and get child count and if it was greater than five and I can bump that up to eight or sorry seven then what we do is we remove child at index zero so the very first one and these we don't need so uh, you we don't need that either so you branch remove child at and get child count coming off of grid panel four if it's greater than seven, that's our condition, then we will remove child at index zero. So compile and play, and you'll see how this works now. So I pick them up, and once we get there, then you'll see it now starts going um, the other way. It starts filling in the numbers. So just an example of how that can work. Uh, not the greatest setup, but uh, in time and when I'm not just going off the top of my head it can it can get a lot better and uh, a lot more procedural anyways uh, so that's how you create some slots just the basics just some information there we will go into making an actual slot based inventory um, when I have the time where we will where are we will actually create a a setup where we have a you know certain number of um, columns and rows and we can fill it full of slots and we can go a step further to create uh, jigsaw inventories like you have an Arma where certain certain widgets take up uh, different uh, sizes and you'd have to fit them in kind of like Tetris and we can but before that we'll have to get to drag and drop drag and drop operations but anyway so that's just kind of a quick little show to of how to create a, a little I guess it shows you what your last picked up item is, is what I've been using it for. So yeah. Anyways, that is it for now. We will catch you guys next time.